of that tartness from regular strawberries. It's just juicy. It's very. I could easily finish this in two bites. Two, two bites. bites. All you right. said two, two bites. bites. One. Damn. <laughs>《24 strawberries, gourmet on a gearies, and boba gummies. All things that you can find within one block of each other in LA's Little Tokyo. So join us and our self proclaimed otaku friend Ryan as we find the most fire hand foods. Iko yo! Yo! Alright, guys, so we're at Teishokia or TOT where we have the battle of the Katsu Sandos. Dude, we have a pork katsu sandwich and a chicken katsu sandwich. We are starting off with the pork one, guys. I think what really makes the sandwich is uh, the Japanese milk bread. This this uh, brown sauce right here is that bulldog sauce, Andrew. I've had a couple katsu sandos before. I'm not gonna say that the one at TOT, as far as the pork goes, was the best looking, but this was one of the best tasting pork ones I've had. All right, now we're moving on to the spicy chicken katsu sando. Uh, guys, this is the hot sandwich now. Okay, Ooh. so this is taking on a little bit more of an American look here. Chicken, chicken katsu, katsu sando. sando. That is wow. fire, fire. Did you steal that quote from John? <laughs> <laughs> it's got everything that you want in a sandwich. Nice crunchy texture, a little bit of refreshing cabbage, a little spiciness. Right off the bat, it feels way more like a complete sandwich with the cabbage and the heavy sauce. The I, gotta, I gotta give it to the pork. I'm going with the pork too. I'm going with the pork katsu sandal. I think the pork tasted better. <laughs> At I, least today, pork was victorious. On to the next spot. What's everybody shooting for? I'm going for the matcha. David, I feel like you gotta go with the Hong okay, Kong. Okay, okay, okay. I gotta go with the Vietnamese. Cafe Sudai. You know what's really interesting about Cafe Dulce is that it's Pan-Asian. Yeah. It's in Little Tokyo, but like we said, they serve stuff that's from many different Asian cultures. It kind of has fusion between Ooh. different Asian elements and obviously American pastries, so. Mine was a toned down Hong Kong milk tea. I've never had a matcha that had such a strong flavor before, and it's delicious. This Vietnamese iced coffee, fairly unique. Yeah. Does it have the same kick as a real Vietnamese Man, coffee? Man, would you just see me when I drink it? I was like, <laughs> To wash down our Pan-Asian drinks, I got us some Pan-Asian treats. Oh, wow. hold up, this guy said wash down our drinks with treats. I'm going with strawberry. strawberry. Ah, I'm not shocked David went with the one with the cream on top. Woo. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the roti, I, I love almonds. This is the dinosaur egg. <laughs> Japanese, Japanese fusion, fusion pastries. pastries. It tastes like your normal, regular donut. <clears throat> got a little bit of a coffee taste. And then you get like the bite of the almonds. It's good. Wow. Look. Dude, that cream is actually way thicker than I thought. And it makes sense because at first I thought, how did they get that light Asian cream to oh. hold the shape? That, that cream is actually really thick. I just found a bunch of cream inside. It's not like any other roti that I've had before. Guys, this is like a really unique bun. It's very chewy, kind of sweet. Definitely actually tastes like a donut despite it being baked. And it has a little nuts inside. Man, round two. Yo, this is the churro one. Oh, that yeah. was the churro one. Yeah, Dude, you yeah, SA. <laughs> this is the churro SA. Here's the green tea donut. They pulled this one off a lot better than the dinosaur egg. Yeah. I feel a lot more of the matcha. All right, so what's the best thing you guys had today? I'm a, I was a fan of the cream donut. I, I'm gonna have to go with the normal dino egg. Cream filled matcha donut. Right. Okay, we have now arrived at our traditional Japanese bakery. Uh, this is the Yamazaki Bakery in Little Tokyo. The J Yamazaki Baking Company, started in Japan, has been around for more than 100 years. This spot itself has been a staple of the community for so long, right? Yeah, so this, this spot was one of the original anchor businesses mm. that helped Little Tokyo flourish and become the largest population of Japanese people outside of Japan. Let's go in there and check it out, Yamazaki Bakery. I grew up drinking this ramune drink. We are looking at some traditional Japanese pastries. The of course, they got the classic Asian bakery items like egg and ham. Those are usually things that you probably won't see at a Western bakery. You have like the, the corn mayo. One of my favorite rolls of all time, the hot dog roll. Japan is one of the only places I've ever been where the food that's on the outside of the restaurant sort of adver being advertised. The, the, yeah, the real thing looks almost exactly like the thing that's being advertised outside in the front. Yo, they like to make that stuff look like a display food. We got a couple of steam mons here. We got three different flavors, but I guess we'll be able to find out once we bite in. Smell it. Spicy beef. 
curry. Curry. That was the curry. It has your traditional Japanese curry inside. It has a little bit of carrot. Yeah, I'm a big fan of actually Japanese curry. Japanese curry is really interesting. They got it from the British. The British got it from the Indians. But the Japanese, if you guys know about Japanese food, very subtle. I'm going with the Ampan. It's your traditional, very old bakery item. That looked like a zit. Yeah, that was like whoa, popping a pimple bra. Whoa. So in Japanese, anko means red bean. So this is traditionally a red bean uh, bakery item. Right. All right, last round here at Yamazaki Bakery. I am going to take the cheese wing. <laughs> it kind of looks like a cross between a Malaysian roti and then a quesadilla. Going with the melon bun. Melon bun, that looks a lot like the bolo bao, David, the Chinese bolo bao. It does, it does. <clears throat> so you're hitting it. <laughs> I think the big thing is the shell. The yeah. shell is, is the selling point. Hey, yo, this almost split like the yin and the yang. Ooh. The light and the dark. Shoo! Andrew, I think, I think you gotta do the chicken katsu curry donut right now. <gasps> oh, it has uh, some panko crumbs on the outside. Yeah, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't pick this one, but let me smell it. Don't get too close. That was really similar to a sugar cookie. Quick take on the cheese wing. Right. The cheese is too salty for me, and it's just, it's cold. It probably was good when it was like hot. Guys, you cannot go wrong with a curry donut. Wow, strawberry milk out of the can. If this was 15 years ago, this is like my favorite drink. When you get older, your taste buds calcify. It ain't quite the same as it used to be, but it's still good. White peach tomomasu drink. Melon ramen here. I haven't had this since I was a kid, but you take the little plunger that comes with it and you go, oh. Wow. Every time I would go to a Japanese place, I would get ramune, but as an adult, what did you guys think in terms of the traditional bakery versus the fusion bakery? One thing I noticed is the Yamazaki bakery, which is more traditional, actually had a lot of similarities with a Hong Kong bakery. I do like the breads here. As far as like the buns go, that's like a toss up with the HK bakery. I gotta say, Japanese milk bread is killing the game. I enjoy going to both today, for sure. All right guys, so we're here at Nijia Market. It's a traditional Japanese market. They have locations all over SoCal and Hawaii. This is actually a market that I go to all the time. I love this place. For how small it is, it actually has a huge wide range of selection here. You know how you know it's legit? because the packaging all has the imported nutrition facts on it. Hey, if it's got a nutritional label that's a sticker, it's legit. Nijia Market. All right, you guys, we have arrived at Nijia Market. Obviously they have a grab and go section. They have dongo here. This is a traditional Japanese street food. Like this one's flavored with yuzu. That one's red bean. You gotta get the takoyaki with the bonito flakes. Onto the rice balls. These are the onigiris. Oh, this oh. is this is really Japanese. The ume, right, a Japanese sour plum. Here we're gonna get Japanese sour plum ume, and then we'll get salmon onigiri, and then we'll get spicy tuna. Obviously, in 2020, Japanese things have become so ubiquitous that a lot of things like Paki and stuff like that, they've made it into other Asian markets, even Western markets. Yo, you know what I noticed? Is that they got these uh, noir black cocoa sticks. Ooh, I haven't even seen these. Hold up. And look, look, they got, they got the sticker. It's got, it's got the import it, sticker. You know what I also love about Asian markets? They have the best snack food here. Oh. Like Asian snacks, bar none, taste better than any type of American snack. And like you also get like different flavors of American snacks. Like you have right. Cheetos with like chocolate drizzle potato chips. Shit, should we Sun. get this? Are you kidding me? Did you guys get like the ramen packs growing up and then you would just heat them up like dry and then pour the seasoning on it? This is exactly like that. I didn't want to go with this, but I had I saw salty lychee and I was like, oh, look, dude, they even got the uh, the sea salt crystals oh. visualization right here. That's what I'm going with. I gotta go be a little healthy. Yasai vegetable and fruit juice. Wow, this guy got the Japanese V8. Let's get the orange soda. I think orange Japan. Cola. I think for me also, I just gotta try one unsweetened tea. Last but not least, guys, I found gummy boba Whoa. pearls. Whoa! You know, earlier, guys, we were talking about do you think ice cream mochi can ever go back to Japan? And I think I'm always interested in that idea because I always want to know what's Asian. What's the Asian American contribution back to Asia? Drinks. This tastes a little bit like Bokari sweat, but way more lychee. This is actually pretty good. I, I would say it's like a V8, but with a lot more of a fruit forward taste. Uh, quick review on the Japan Cola. Definitely no vitamin C in this because it is totally artificially flavored, but I like the little bit of orange zing. This says guozhi uh, in Chinese, but in Japanese it's the same thing, same meaning. Fruit juice, 10%. Uh, this also says world right here, Shijie Kitchen. World Kitchen, World of Kitchen. 
So I've got a dango, which is a uh, red bean rice cake shaped into a ball. These kind of look like Majin Buu. So I got I got here a uh, an egg salad sando. It has a little bit of ham and lettuce, tomato and cucumber. I mean, it's your traditional kind of like on the go snack for Japanese people. It's all about the egg. This this sandwich is all about the egg. The ham is there just to accompany the egg. Here I have the takoyaki. These are your kind of starchy roasted octopus balls. They usually have a piece of octopus right in the middle. Bonito flakes, a little bit of mayo on top, a little bit of the, uh, I think, katsu sauce on top too. So let's try them cold, man. Supermarket, Supermarket snacks. snacks. Andrew, you've had takoyaki before. How does that ring? Surprisingly good. It tastes good. Like I said before, this is your classic sandwich. It has that nice eggy taste, and then you get the nice bite of like a cold, vegetable you can't go wrong it's for me this was really traditional onigiri guys these are the classic rice balls wrapped in seaweed with filling inside i've got the ume sour plum wow i got the salmon onigiri i have the spicy tuna one onigiri, onigiri. I will say that the ume is something that everybody should try, but it might not be something that everybody likes. Guys, you can't go wrong with onigiri. You have fish or some type of protein, rice, seaweed. You can't go wrong. All right, guys, we are ending off with some sweet snacks in the Gia market. We've got Japanese boba gummies. Um, so I got here uh, hoshigaki, which is a dried persimmon. Yeah. You know what this tastes like? This is kind of like the Asian version of a fig. Ryan, you went with the most traditional snack. I have the least traditional snack. A chocolate drizzled potato chip. It, it looks excellent. exactly like the photo. This is the boba gummy and the noir black cocoa stick. That tastes like a boba. It does taste like boba. It tastes like a pearl. Whoa. Man, what are those called? Those cookie tubes that come in the tin can? They're, I taste more cocoa than a Pejoy though. Yeah, What's your favorite thing from the Gia market? Egg salad sandwich, hands down. Okay. I got to gotta say the salted plum ume onigiri. Actually, I got to give it to these too. Actually, yeah. the boba gummies. My favorite was the cold takoyaki balls, man. Those were actually really good. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, you guys, we have arrived at Weller Court. Because we went to Najia Market, we got to check out Murakai Market. This is my first time in Marukai Market, and it is way bigger than Najia. Dude, that was my first time in Marukai Market. I was really impressed. Makagi, Makagi strawberries. strawberries. Most expensive strawberry I've ever had in my life. There's barely any of that tartness from regular strawberries. It's just juicy. It's very light. It's not too sweet, but it's not very sour. Do I dare say this is the perfect strawberry? Easily the highest quality, also the most expensive strawberry I've ever had. <laughs> you can tell by the light color, it definitely does lack some of that like deep strawberry flavor. There's like no sourness. One. Yo, get John to try it. Me and the whole thing. Gotta come up with a new word. Delicious. Aww. For sure there's some genetic modification. That's like if a strawberry hopped in a Gundam suit. All right, these onigiris look different, guys. They're not uh -oh. actually fully wrapped in seaweed. Guys, this is the new age onigiri. Guys, this is not your everyday onigiri. Oh. There's shrimp in here. Seasoned perfectly well. A little bit of mayo. You got the fork cake on top. It is just the perfect blend of meat, rice, and seaweed. My first bite of lobster was just so-so, but then once I got deep into the lobster meat, that was good. It doesn't taste as much like a traditional onigiri as it does almost taste like one of those bowls, but just put in onigiri form. It was really good, wow. but for myself, I could have used a little bit more seaweed. Rice, rice and nori. nori. This one was like a breakfast spam eggs and rice in a bite. Oh, How man. How does it compare, Andrew? You I, have the direct I mean, matchup. I mean, you're talking about an onigiri that was a fraction of the price. I gotta admit, this did taste better, but I will say there's a beauty of those onigiris that we had in Nijia. That was like, gave me that real deal um, homemade onigiri flavor. This tastes like a premium spicy tuna bowl, but just clumped up into an onigiri shape. Yeah, I mean, I got the uh, the California onigiri here. I mean, it has all the familiar flavors of a California roll. It's just pumped up a little bit more with a furikake, the high quality seaweed. Did you guys say these almost taste like full on meals by themselves? I gotta see John try it. Yo, I'm so excited. Okay, right there, you got the beef one. Beef. Beef one for a beefy guy, let's go. Beef. Oh, that is so good. I'm shocked that the buff guy likes the beef one. Bake man. I could easily finish this in two bites. It's just so good, man. Do it. Two, two bites. bites. Right. You said two, two bites. bites. Two bites. One. Wow. Damn. Guys, for the onigiri battle, we had the one from Nijia Market. You know, the cheap one. 
and then you kind of got the gourmet hipster high-end version. Which one did you guys enjoy more? Going here, spending more on the elevated version, I'm expecting to get, if I'm getting a California onigiri, I want real crab in it, especially for the price that we're paying. You know, I think there's a beauty in the simple one. Yeah. But for sure, this one's the quality's higher. Yeah. To be honest, that there is a beauty in the to-go market onigiri. Obviously, taste and quality-wise, this one takes the cake. How about this? If you grew up eating onigiri, I think you got to try rice and yogurt. But if it's your first time, just go to the market and grab and go. What was your favorite thing, David? I, I would say katsu sando was my favorite. Or katsu sando. Or katsu sando, which actually runs counter what I believed, I would say. Okay, what about snack-wise? The boba gummies that I saved in my pocket. David got them right on the, the boba gummies ready to go. Andrew, what was your favorite? Man, one of the highlights were those awuyaki strawberries that we just had. Mm. Those brought me back to my days at the Tsukiji market. My day at the Tsukiji market. My one day that I spent there. Yeah, it takes me back to that. I really just have to go with the most simple item I had today, which was the onigiri at Nijia. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that episode of The Takeout Show. This was another ethnic enclave. First episode, Little Armenia. Second episode, Little Tokyo. I think there's, Little Tokyo has, might have a few more rounds in it. I think there's so much more to discover in Little Tokyo. I can't wait to do our next food crawl. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Click subscribe if you haven't. Turn on your notifications. Share it with your friends. Check out Ryan's links down below. And in the comments below, guys, let us know if there's any other Japanese snack that we should have had in this video that we might have just missed. Give us your otaku rating out of five. I give myself a 2.5 out of five. You went with a four? <laughs> Bro, I've been reading manga and watching anime since my cousin introduced to me when I was like nine. So you went with the four. I just like 1.5, 1.5. I know it's a quiet day, but you guys come here and check it out. There's a lot of shops that are open right now to support small businesses. All right, you guys, this was volume one of our takeout show, Little Tokyo. Until next time, we out. Peace. Okay, real quick, right outside Kimonoya. If you guys didn't know, this is what I was talking about when uh, I was talking about a waifu body pillow. Oh. This, 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 this is for your OG otaku. Shout out to waifu Jenny. <laughs> True. Well, I didn't know. That's where it came from. No, that's where, that's where it comes from. Waifu. Well, her, her IG name. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> anyway.